Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're continuing on with our team of this season and this time we're doing our left winger. So we started off anyway with, uh, I believe, is going to be up to the top two for this anyway, Eden Hazard. Yeah, I think if we're being honest, it's going to be a two horse race when it comes down to people voting about it. But Eden Hazard's got one massive thing over Alexis Sanchez, doesn't he? And that's the fact yeah. that he's got a league title winner's his medal now. Yeah. Um, and he's got 15 goals and 5 assists as well this season, which is pretty pretty decent numbers for an attacking midfielder for a team who, to be fair, play on the break. Yeah, and in a lot of cases, he, he um, Chelsea relied a lot on Costa, and he had a terrible season last year, Hazard, so yeah. he, for him to come back in, he was almost like a new signing to them again. Yeah. Uh, people knew what he was capable of, but he just uh, he went back to his old self this season. I think Conte had a big part to play in that, because oh, his confidence yeah. seemed uh, rock bottom. Uh, that um, when Mourinho was there anyway for this season just gone yeah I think um, I think Conte's given him freedom again Yeah, which Mourinho just didn't give him um, yeah. he was you know well, with that made, system too yeah Yeah, he was made to track back in Mourinho's system and was made to kind of try and follow the full back and do all of that stuff especially away from home whereas as you say with the system now with the three central defenders with the two wing backs who kind of just go up and down all day yeah. long with Conte and Matic in midfield he kind of has the freedom to just stay beyond the halfway yeah. line and just be Himself that player. Pedro, yeah. yeah, just be that player with Pedro where, where the ball breaks. The two of them just move at a frightening, frightening pace together. And they just create chances to create absolute mayhem together, yeah. which has been vital to Chelsea this season. What do you think yourself? Yeah, I think Hazard again last year. Again, lost confidence completely under Mourinho. Slow start to this season as well. Yeah, I mean it was it was difficult. I think you said it to me around Christmas time. Watch Chelsea are going to turn now and win the league after, yeah. cha after changing the three at the back. And to be fair to you, you're, you're right. And he's just yeah. been he's been so influential. I'll <laughs> <laughs> give you credit. <laughs> Never hit the end of that now. Yeah. But anyway, just between himself and Diego Costa, it's like, on camera since, now. <laughs> yeah, it's, on, it's on YouTube now. Since since probably January, just the the change in form between I think Eden Hazard, Diego Costa, and Pedro. Yeah. And can't they obviously um bedding into the team even further? That like they're the three reasons why Chelsea have, have gone and, and won the league as comfortably as they have as well. Yeah, with yourself, there. Yeah, the, the system just kind of it kind of just clicked <laughs> with Chelsea there around Christmas time, and they just they just powered on. There was never going to be really anyone that was going to catch them, um, and the Spurs gave a, a bit of a shout, but there was never really going to be too much of a too much of a title race. Um, Hazard like it's just his pace. He can cross the ball, he scores goals. So you can't really ask for much more from a winger at the end of the day. If he does all that, his manager's going to be really, really happy and they're probably going to win more league titles. Yeah, definitely. I'd be interested to see who votes between him now and uh, Alexis Sanchez is next up. Yeah. Uh, for me, probably be my pick just because of the amount of goals he scored and, you know, he also has 10 assists as well as his 21 goals. So, yeah. uh it's kind of hard to look past him, in my opinion. He's had a great season himself. Much like Koscielny, individually, yeah. he had a great season uh, for himself, accolade-wise. But as far as Arsenal as, as a team, I don't I don't know what it is. Like It's not like he's not playing with quality around him. He's got Ozil yeah. there. Uh, and he's like Koscielny, he's one of the best centre-backs in the league as well. So it's not, he's not like he's surrounded by terrible players. You know, a, a lot of the other players are average in that Arsenal squad, but... Uh, I just feel like they should be doing better with the, with the team that they have. Yeah, it's probably, I suppose when people are looking to vote, it's probably going to be, they're going to look at the teams more if they're kind of, the players are kind of very yeah. similar. So I, I think just the the run or the, the lack of a run Arsenal went on and um, when they just couldn't do anything right, I, I think might, uh, might almost sway people whether they're going to give any of their players an award at the end of the day. I think the, um, I think the <coughs> thing that inflates maybe Sanchez's stats a little bit is he played a lot of, especially the first half of the season. As a striker. He played as a striker, yeah. which is, you know, he's got 21 goals, so he's got six more than Hazard does. But in terms of if we're picking for a left winger, I don't know if he has had as good an influence as a left-sided player as Hazard has because he's moved out yeah, there. In that's the an interesting half, point. Thanks. Moved out there in the second half of the season. He's kind of tailed off a bit, to be fair. Like, I know... During the week at Southampton, he got a goal and stuff and played exceptionally well for Arsenal. He was injured and he still scored. Yeah, he scored a good goal as well. I was oh. happy to see him score against Southampton too. Yeah. How do you but, feel about him anyway? Um, like personally, like there's there's not there's not a lot wrong with his play and what he's done this year. I think that was a great point you made that uh, he's probably played a lot a lot of games through the middle, especially yeah. when Giroud was out for him, injured, whatever. But I think one thing that might might hurt him when people are people are going to vote for this would be his attitude. 
probably throughout yeah. the season and after the Bournemouth thing and things like that and a couple of times when he's come off the pitch and seen him sulking off anger and things like that I think that might hurt him but yeah. in terms of his overall quality his talent and his play he's quite unplayable he's right up there beside Eden Hazard but I, I do think like, his I, poor attitude might hurt him you say that about his attitude but I feel like he's given a lot more than the other players around him and he just demands yeah. that people play up to his level or try at least try to play up to his level yeah, I, I wouldn't criticise his attitude I think one of the things he's a winner um, we have it here like as well that you have he as a winger as well you've got a creative influence in the team too and he 2.1 key passes per game to Eden Hazard's 3.8 which is nearly two more key passes a game for Hazard that he creates for his team yeah. so Sanchez is I mean, no, by his nature, Sanchez is a more selfish player. He looks to score the goal more than Hazard would. Hazard is much happier to play the second pass, maybe slide Pedro through, maybe slide Alonso or Moses through, to play the ball across to Costa or another player yeah. to score the goal. I think that kind of creative influence that Eden Hazard gives to Chelsea yeah. but and it, the creative drive he gives, I think, supersedes Sanchez's yeah, more guess. goals and assists I know it sounds stupid but no I get what you're saying but I think that is because Hazard is is actually more of a, a wide player whereas you're yeah. saying with Sanchez playing up front he's going to be more greedy natural if he's playing as yeah. a striker do you know what I mean so you can kind of well, uh, link those two and, and see why yeah. one plays uh, better as a wide player than the other well I think people forget about Sanchez as well Sanchez went to Barcelona and kind of became a left sided midfielder even AZ he was more of a second striker or a striker yeah. He wasn't really a wide player and he was kind of created into that by Messi being moved into the kind of false nine role for Barcelona under um, Guardiola. I think Sanchez was probably originally signed to play in yeah. that kind of striker role as a, a basically what they have in Luis Suarez now, who just runs the lines and chases in behind and hassles defenders, but then they change system and he kind of became a left winger through yeah. that more than more naturally being one. Yeah, well, we move on to uh, <coughs> Philip Coutinho now and then. Uh, I think he does deserve a mention more so for the first half of the season because he was absolutely un- unbelievable till yeah. he got injured. Uh, it's kind of he's just unfortunate there's so much quality on that side, like yeah. between Hazard and Sanchez, that kind of just kind of maybe it overlooks him a little bit. But uh, I I feel like if he was to keep kind of maintaining his form that he was on, Liverpool would be up further than they, than they are. Yeah, absolutely. and uh, you see now since Mane has been out, they've kind of been relying on him a lot more to deliver. Yeah. So. Lady. Yeah, hundred percent. Like being a Liverpool fan as well, it's been it's been frustrating. Not only <laughs> not only Coutinho, but um, the the lack of consistency across the whole team has been yeah. has been poor. I mean, up till up till December, unplayable. Definitely up there with Chelsea as a team who were going to challenge for the league. But since January, and partic- particularly that injury, I think it was poss- probably Sunderland. I think Coutinho picked up yeah, his injury against Sunderland, Anfield. Yeah. And since then, since he's come back, he's not really been the same player. So I think it'll be up to him to go and get a good pre-season under his belt for next year now if he's going to rediscover his good form. Of course, he'd probably be going to the Confederations Cup with Brazil. Yeah, he should make. He should just about make their squad, to be fair. And just about. He's one of the best players. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know, between him, Neymar and Jesus, they're the front three. Like. Yeah, but they kind of... Change it to a front two to play Paulinho in central midfield. Oh God. <laughs> Listen, Paulinho's got Paulinho's got five goals his last four Brazil games. Is he still playing in China? Yeah, he's got a new career now. Okay, well we'll move on to Hyung Min Son. Uh, I think he's been unreal when he's been called upon by Spurs uh, this season, and you know a lot of a lot of Spurs fans didn't really know what what to think of him. I know Glenn. Uh, rates him very highly. Yeah. Uh, he was talking to him a few week, uh, about him a few weeks ago and he was saying how, how well he's stepped in this season last year he was he wasn't really much to talk about but this year he's he's really shown his his uh, quality and potential. Yeah, I think Son in the absence of Harry Kane especially when Kane was out injured for them few games the couple of times he's been out injured Son kind of just took over the mantle for Spurs and basically kept him in the title race to a certain extent. With his goals, he's got 12 goals and 4 assists this season, which is decent for a player who's 11 appearances off the bench as well. Yeah. He's not a you know guaranteed starter every week for them. But when loves he has a volley. Played, yeah, loves, loves a volley. Like and loves a volley and loves to ghost past the player and win a free kick as well. A soft little one now and then. 
He can score. He can score. He can score. Uh, nothing that fella. He's very, very good. Yeah, what do you think yourself, Gar? If, well, if you, if you take him, I know he's come off the bench a good bit, but if you take him out of the team completely or out of the, out of the match day squad, I think Spurs are they, they struggle a bit, a good bit more without having the option off the bench. If he's on the bench or if he's on the pitch, they they just struggle to kind of create stuff. And when when they have injuries, he's the one who steps up every time, and that's kind of exactly what a manager is going to want out yeah. of his players. If they have no one to step up, then they're going to really be in trouble when one day star man gets injured and their season will just go down. So that's one of the main reasons Spurs has managed to do so well this season. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As far as uh, our next guy is uh, Gilfy Sigurdsson. Now yeah. I didn't notice till you actually brought it up, but he played a lot more as a left side yeah. player. You were saying this season. I yeah. think he's been unreal. Well, he started like he started seventeen games this season. It was thirty-seven on the left wing, and actually moved when they changed formation within a game to the left wing seven or eight more times. So he's played on the left wing most of the season. Yeah, and not a lot have, of people would know that now. To be honest, yeah, to have nine goals and thirteen assists as well is exceptional for a team in relegation dogfight. Yeah. Like and I know they're kind of out of it now, but without him, they're down. I There's, think I think he scored against. Every team in the top six, I yeah, think he scored against. He's also scored in his last five games at Old Trafford, yeah, which is a uh, kick he scored. which is a nice little nugget to go yeah. along with it. But I think he's, I think he's a phenomenal player. I know it didn't work out that well at Spurs, but I think he's an absolutely exceptional player. He's far too good to be at Swansea. Yeah, there's big, big talk that uh, we're going to sign him now for uh, I'd say around twenty million. I yeah. hope we do because uh, if Barkley goes, and he, he Sigurdsson's, he's already better than him. Yeah, and you know, as you put that type of quality in with better quality players around him, he's obviously going to shine even more. So, I feel like if he does come to us, it'll be an abs- uh, one of the best signs of the summer if he does come to Everton. Yeah, absolutely. And Sigurds and you for one of the biggest things of his game, I think, as well, is his set piece delivery. Yeah, his set piece delivery is maybe the best in the Premier League. He just picks out. He one has of a rifle. yeah. He has a knack of picking out Fernando Llorente from a free kick from forty yeah. yards. I wouldn't mind getting the two of them. Yeah, to be honest with you, because Lukaku is, is he's going to go. It's a big, big statement. No, I think he's gonna go. Um, Gareth, what do you think on Sir Um, I think he's like, I'd say it looks like he is gonna move. If he does move, it'd be a big addition to Everton or whoever else he might go to. But I think he's gonna be he's one going to, to Everton. And Everton. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be one of the ones to watch out for where he does go. Swansea will have to do very, 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 very well to even hope to keep hold on to him. He's just he's been he's been ever present. They're gonna have a difficulty replacing him as well. Like three seven appearances yeah. this yeah. season so far. He started like, every single yeah, game. So like they're gonna have to seriously go out and spend some big money in order to bring someone in. He's if they stay up. Anywhere near, yeah, if they stay up. Is, is there an argument that he's currently the most influential player for his team in the Premier League? Definitely. That he's probably got the most yeah, influence. Yeah, it's kind of hard to leave him out of the team as well because yeah. he's been so good for, for, for uh, a team that are fighting for relegation, do you know yeah. what I mean? So. Without him and Llorente, they're down. Like That's mm. the God's honest truth. There's no one else who really springs to mind when you think about like influential players, is it? Yeah. I mean, like his set pieces alone, if Swansea stay up, will probably be... For influences, I'd probably say Deli Ali. But I think, but I think position. Ali's more replaceable than Sigurds, and I think he can bring in Son, and Son can do a job for you. Yeah, you know, you yeah, take to a degree, yeah, yeah. I think you take out Sigurds, and who are they going to bring in? Jefferson Montero gets injured every twenty minutes. He's on the pitch. Like, yeah. well, anyway, yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally agree with you there. Anyway. Yeah. We we'll go for our honorable, honorable mentions then. Uh, Leroy Sane has to be up there. I think he is a future player this season I think next year he's going to be very very good uh, between him and Jesus I think they, yeah. they're they going to be if City are going to do well I, t- I think I said this on a video already uh, if they do well I think those two players are going to be key for them yeah absolutely I think Leroy Sané is for his first the, season the talent he's got at 19 years old to be doing that to have done what he did in the Bundesliga last season read it, 8 goals and 7 assists I think he finished with last season in the Bundesliga, which is decent yeah. um, for an 18-year-old. Oh, definitely. And then moving to City for big, big money. He took a little bit of time to bet in. He didn't really set the world alight in the first half of the season, but this second half of the season, he's kind of really come on. Yeah, And totally. he, you can see the talent is 100% there. And there's little flashes with Sané where he just looks absolutely unplayable. Like, full-backs are, full are going to have nightmares about him for years in the Premier League if he stays at City because he's just got great feet he's very strong he's big he's physical he's a good finisher he's got everything you need in a winger yeah uh, what about Matt Phillips off West Brom yeah like, like West, West Brom had a good season again uh, Tony Kiel has kept him really solid and in a, in a player like Matt Phillips 
Yeah. Like he, he's obviously got a quality delivery, but he'll also do the, yeah. the dirty work as such that Tony Pulis will want coming back to, to cover his full back on forward. And I think he's he's probably been been, been almost perfect for yeah, he's got Tony Pulis. He's got eight assists, yeah. four goals. Yeah, like Matt Phillips is, obviously he's not in the same bracket as yeah. Hazard or Sanchez or anything like that. But I would put Sané in the bracket of Hazard in that next th- season. I think he'll be up and around. I would think the top, I think the top six that we've talked about there before we've moved on to Phillips are the best six players yeah. in that position in the league at the minute. Um, and I think then you drop beyond that and it's players who have just had a good season. Yeah. So Phillips is a player who has spent a lot of time in the championship, has bounced around teams at the bottom end of the Premier League, QPR, Blackpool, now West Brom, where he's finished highest he's ever finished in the Premier League this season. And he has had a good influence on them. But I think what lets him down is he had half a good season this year. He picked up an injury and he's really not come back from it. James McLean has kind of taken his place on the team again because... We all know as like Ireland fans that if you give James McLean a chance, he'll just keep running and running and running. Yeah. And he's very hard to take out of the team because of his work rate. I've seen it. There was a video of some player called him. He's like the fittest man. Or was it an article? And someone said he was like the fittest man he's ever played with. A West Brom yeah. player. I can't remember who it was. I think it was Darren Fletcher. It was Darren Fletcher. Yeah. Came out and said that the man just does not stop running. Yeah, he just will go and go and go. Like, he yeah. open I love McLean, though. Yeah, yeah. Ah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I'd put him in here as just a sentimental pick. <laughs> just like, he's not even had a good season. <laughs> Let's but... just throw him in there. Yeah. Sure, why not? Yeah, yeah, Irish fans, you want to vote for James McLean? <laughs> <laughs> By all means, <laughs> don't bring him in there. <laughs> um, he's a dislike to some monarch out over the water or something, doesn't he? <sighs> I don't know. It's, it's, there's some song about it or something. <laughs> uh, we won't get into <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, so you have down here Kevin Morales. I can't you just... They kind of after you see the golfing class is kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I think Morales on his day can be absolutely unreal, yeah. and then there's day and then there's days where he's just you know he just doesn't turn up. He goes yeah. missing in games a lot. Yeah. Uh, when he's on it, and he does tend to perform a lot better against the bigger teams. I don't know yeah. what it is, but uh, he's big kind of player. Yeah. yeah. But, but but when he's put it out there like uh, against other teams, he's just he just doesn't perform. I mean they have to give him a new uh, contract there. And I'm kind of struggling to, to wonder why. I'm hoping now he can kick back onto his old self, but I don't know if injuries have, have uh, picked up on him now because when he when he first came in, he had he, he was the player that Everton fans looked at to, mm. to get them off the edge of their seats. Yeah. And he was the player who, who like, if we're going to play against someone uh, big and get a result, he'd be one of our players that we'd look up to, to win a game now. Yeah. Now it's just he's just there because he's... Better than the average players that we have there at the moment. Kind of, if you don't have him, you're kind of going with unproven players and like Adam Ola Luckman. Yeah, but he's putting the playing like that. Calvert Lewin. Played Calvert Lewin there a couple of weeks yeah. ago against, I think it was United and dropped Morales. Yeah, I don't know. I think with Morales, like the biggest thing that kind of led me to kind of put him at the end of the list or whatever is down to it. He doesn't seem to, for me, whenever I've watched him and the kind of stats back it up, he's an exceptional passer of the ball for a left sided midfielder. Yeah. And when he gets into a good position, when he goes to beat a man, he can sometimes lose the ball, but when he plays like the intelligent pass, whether it's back into midfield to switch it to the other side yeah. to create a chance, he's very good at that. And He has a great if, football brain, but it's just a matter of using the thing. Yeah. Exactly. I, think he's a, I think he's still a quality player. I think he just needs to find maybe his goal-scoring touch again more than anything. Yeah, because exactly. Because he scored a lot of goals for Everton when he, started, when he first came into the side, and he was a menace yeah. to deal with. Yeah, and he like he he does score all types of goals, like free kicks and yeah. uh, and that as well. But uh, on his day, he can be like a match winner himself. Yeah, he's done it many many times. And there was a time where he fell out with the fans and stuff, and he done that took that penalty against West Brom. He took the ball off Danes and they yeah. missed it. And uh, all the Everton fans were going mad about. It. I think Martinez took him off. I think Martinez didn't do him any favors no. anyway, and kind of put him out there and just like, kind of. Let, like put him out into the spotlight, but also at yeah. the same time you just let him rot in the reserves and stuff. He wasn't really playing then, and yeah. we were all wondering why he was wasn't getting game time. Yeah, it was bizarre, really. But uh, as far as I, I can say that we'd have to go with our top five of Hazard, Sanchez, Coutinho, Son, Son and Sigurdsson. Yeah. And uh, if there's anyone we left out, please let us know in the comments below. And we didn't mention <laughs> but uh, yeah leave your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe tag your friends away and then let them know and help them yeah. choose everyone's allowed votes so more votes the better thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV